In this worksheet, we have three columns with data validation. The first one has months, so you can select a month name or change your mind and select a different month. In the second column, you can select names, and we've got five names listed. So I can select Ben, and then I could go back and select Dan. And instead of replacing it, it will add that to the previously selected names. The same thing in this numbers column. So I could select two, and then three, and then one. So you can make multiple selections in a cell, and they're separated by a comma. In this example, we can also add new items. So right now, if I look at this list, we have five names. Perhaps I'd like to add Al to this list. So in this cell, I can just select and type Al, and when I press Enter, it's automatically added in the cell, even though it wasn't in the list, and now it appears at the top of the list. So it's added it to that list and sorted it alphabetically. And we can do the same thing with numbers. This works with some VBA code in Excel, and to see the code, we can right-click on this sheet tab and click view code and that takes us into the visual basic editor and when there's a change on the worksheet this event code runs so at the top we have our variables the worksheet that we're going to refer to here is a worksheet called lists and if we look at that sheet it has a list of months this list of names is called name list and this list of numbers is called num list so we can add to those lists and change the size. So if we add a new number here, then instead of being four cells, it would include all the numbers in our list. And going back to our worksheet, we'll see what happens in the background when we add a new name. We don't have anyone called Bob on this list, so perhaps we want to add Bob. So in this cell, I'm going to type the new name, Bob, and when I press enter, I've put a breakpoint in the code now. So the code stops there, and I can now step through the code to see how it works. So the first thing it does is check to see how many cells were changed. And, and if that target count is more than one, then we're going to just exit this subroutine. So we only changed one cell, and now it's going to check and see if there's any data validation on this worksheet. And if it's nothing, if there are no data validation cells, again, we would exit the subroutine. Now we're going to see if the change occurred in a cell that was part of that data validation range. And if it's not, if that's nothing, then this code will do nothing. But we're going to now go into this section because the cell we changed is part of that data validation range. So the new value is the value in that cell. So the new value we're adding we can see is Bob, which is what we typed. Then it's going to undo that and get the old value back in that cell. So previously we had Ben, Dan, Al in that cell. So it's going to get that value and then put the new value back in. If the change occurred in column two for months, we don't want multiple selections there. We only want them in column three or four. So we made a change in column three, so it goes into this section, and now it's going to get the formula from our data validation cell, and it says equal name list. So it will then take that equal sign off, and we're left with name list. And it's going to set a range variable to that worksheet, our list worksheet, and the name list. It will find out which column that list is in. So we can use this for different lists. It'll, it'll just figure out where each one is. So the list we're going to change is in column three, and it will check to see if the name we just typed is in that list on that sheet. And if it is in that list, it would do nothing. And if it's not, it's going to go into this section and add the name to the list. So It'll figure out where the list ends and what's the next row that's available. So row 7. And in row 7, column 3, it's going to put our new name. And if we take a quick look, we could see that there's Bob. It's been added in row 7, column 3. 
So now it's going to change the named range, so it includes that new cell, and reset our range variable. Then it's going to sort that range in ascending order. And then finally it just checks to see if the old value was just a blank cell or if the new one is, and finally it will combine the old value and the new one and put that in the cell. So if we go back to our cell now, Bob has been added to the previous string and it's been added alphabetically in this list.